You clicked on this video because you want to know how to set up your Elgato Cam Link 4K. I'm going to show you guys how to set this up or what kind of settings she use, what kind of color formats and all that stuff within OBS. So we're going to show you how to do the settings on the camera and also the settings in OBS. So I can show you guys how to set it up for your live streams or for your YouTube live streams or for your videos on YouTube, just like the one you're watching right now. So let's get into it and I hope you guys enjoy this video. The first thing you're gonna need is your cam link, but the thing is with your cam link, you're gonna need an HDMI cable to mini HDMI so you can plug it into your camera. You're gonna need to go into the Elgato website and look at the cameras that are supported for cam link 4K. You're gonna have to look and see if your camera is compatible. That's the number one thing you should do before even buying it uh, and make sure that it works and make sure has clean HDMI. Clean HDMI is basically when you start streaming with your camera, you're able to take off all the little details like the shutter speed, ISO, white balance, all that stuff on the camera. You're going to want to take that off because it's going to look ugly just having it there. So just make sure to know that your camera is 100% compatible and you should be good from there. I'm using a Sony a7 III. I use a mini USB cable and I plug it into a USB hub and that's how i pretty much charge it i know a lot of people use dummy batteries i should probably get a dummy battery but i haven't been able to i haven't had a problem in streaming like that for like maybe two three years haven't had one issue and it's worked completely fine for me when you're in the sony camera you want to go into the settings it's called record settings now i think there's a lot of options you could do 24 fps 30 fps or 60 fps i personally do 60 fps because cam link allows you to do 60 fps but if you can't for some reason you could go down to 30. so next you're going to want to go into the settings folder it's a yellow folder in sony you're gonna go into hdmi settings you're gonna check your hdmi resolution which is 1080p just go 1080p it still works good if you can't just go for 720p if you can and there's another section where it says 24 60p just go for 60p that's what you want to do you want to do 60 fps it's a lot better hdmi info display that shows like all the details on the screen you're gonna want to turn that off so it doesn't show anywhere on the screen you have these settings it looks just ugly when you're streaming trust me you're gonna want to turn that off and also where it says control for hdmi you're gonna want to turn that on as you go through the next folder in the same settings for sony there's a section where it says usb connection you're gonna want to put mass storage on that there's another section where it says usb lens settings you're gonna put single on that there's another section where it says usb power supply you're gonna want to turn that on for my case it's because my camera charges through a usb instead of using the dummy battery these settings are just so your camera can find find the cam link so it can all connect smoothly. I'm going to make this super simple for the shutter speed so you can have the correct FPS on your camera set. If you're going to want to do 30 FPS, you're going to have to leave your shutter speed at 1 60th of a second. The easiest way to remember this is 30 times 2 is 60. So you got to set your shutter speed to 60. Now, if you want to do that for 60 FPS, what do you do? You do 60 times 2, it will be 120, but 125th is the only option on most cameras. I don't think there's any cameras that have 120th of a second. So you can stick to 125th of a second and it will still work the same. All the settings ready on your camera, connected to your cam link. We know it's compatible. We have the FPS setting correctly at 60 or 30. Now we can go into OBS Studio so I can show you guys how to set it up for your live streams or for the YouTube video that you want to make. Let's get to it. You're going to want to go into your new scene, go to your sources. You're going to want to add a video capture device. You're going to add it. We're just going to add an existing one so I can show you guys. I can't use the camera that you're watching me right now in this little box. It's not, it doesn't let me. So I'm going to show you guys my second camera. We're going to add this Sony a6000 behind the scenes camera. You're going to see me pop up here probably. Let's see. There we go we popped up now when you add a device this little window is gonna pop up here right this one says usb video because this is the other cam link that i have the the bootlegged uh cam link there's one that says 4k this rule will apply if you have a, a different type of way of capturing your camera not a cam link you could still use this method it still works the same you're gonna click cam link 4k and when it pops up if it doesn't pop up just make sure deactivate activate and it should be able to show your screen right here i like to put deactivate when not showing so like if I'm switching in between the scenes for a stream, I like to have that on because sometimes when you switch into another scene, I have two, three cameras that I use on my stream. It will deactivate and it won't stay active until I get to that scene and then it'll activate. When I choose to switch a scene, it will activate for me. The resolution, 1920 by 1080p. That's the best resolution you can get, especially with that camera. This cam link over here, 
monitor does, it does 30 FPS. If it was my other camera, it would show 60 FPS. For video format, for some reason on this camera, I can't do YU. It does like this weird, like glitchy thing. I think it's because it's 30 FPS. I don't really know why it does that, but usually if your camera is 60 FPS, I believe you can do YU, Y2. For color space, you're supposed to put 709, I believe, but I don't change it. I just leave it at default. Usually you could put partial. If you put partial, it makes it like a little bit darker, a little bit more contrasty. If that's your look, go for it. And then if you do full, it's like a flat color. It shows more detail. Shadows bring got brought up a little bit there. For buffering, I put auto detect. When enable a buffers video slash audio data to ensure the smoothest. So I leave it at auto detect. I've never messed with this setting. I've always left it the same. Apply rotation data from camera. I think that's another one that gets defaulted. Now audio output mode. I used to have it at capture audio only. From dealing with things in the past, I used to have a lot of buzzing with the cam link. If it doesn't work for you, leave it at capture audio only for me personally i left it at output desktop audio direct sound and i never heard any buzzing from my cam link i don't know if they it was like a glitch or maybe they had to patch it up i don't know what it was but i've always left it there and that's worked fine for me if it doesn't work for you just put capture audio only and you should be good from there on if you need to adjust your camera you might want to go to configure video and from here you could fix the internal settings of your camera through obs so if you need to bring up the brightness you could bring this up if you need more contrast you want that darker shady look bump that up or you could lower it down if you want more shadows i wouldn't touch hue because it's gonna mess with your color and your white balance i personally would mess with your white balance on the camera itself and for saturation if you want a little bit more color just make sure you're not completely red you know you can mess with that as well and this will stay permanent i believe for some webcams you have to keep putting it over and over again. But for instance, if you have like a Sony camera, it stays permanent. The settings stay there. They do not change at all. Another thing that you can do besides going into the internal settings of OBS to adjust like certain like brightness and stuff, you can also add filters. You can do a color correction here. You definitely don't want this. This looks really bad. You could add more saturation. You could lower saturation. You want to do black and white. You could adjust the brightness here. You can adjust the contrast. Color correction is probably the best thing you can do when it comes to like um, adjusting your camera settings to make it look look very professional and nice you know there you guys have it there goes a full tutorial on how to set up your elgato cam link 4k I hope you guys gained a ton of value from this video and if it helped you let me know in the comments below let me know what you guys think if you want to stick around check out the last two videos that i made i made one for a twitch shout out command that's probably one of the best ones you might want to use for your twitch stream if you're a twitch streamer make sure to check that video out and also if you have any issues with obs studio any buzzing static noise i have a tutorial on that on how to fix that and how to find the problem and possibly solve it for yourself so make sure to check out those videos and thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace out bye